circles, tangents. If this isn't one of your favorite topics at GCSE, uh, I'll change your mind in this video, innit? So you've got a five mark question. Maybe you've seen this before, someone actually sent it to me to complete. So we've got this circle. We've got a point P uh, with coordinates 3PP. Uh, we've got this tangent. <laughs> we've got this tangent 30 degrees. And we've got uh, the tangent AB, okay? So AB is a tangent to the circle at the point A. Find the value of P. Now, the first thing I would be thinking about is this coordinate being on the circle, if I know the equation of the circle, then I could just sub in these coordinates and figure out what P is, okay? But I don't have the equation of the circle. Now, they would say in the question that the center is at the origin, uh, which I've indicated over here. What is the general equation of a circle uh, where the center is at zero? You need to know this. It's x squared plus y squared is the radius squared, okay? So what's the missing piece? It's obviously the radius, all right? Now we're gonna have to use this information to work out what the radius is, okay? And then we could sub in these coordinates here and easy peasy, squeeze the lemon, we can work out what the value of p is. Now, whenever we see tangents and circles, you should only be thinking about one thing. Tangent meets radius at 90 degrees, one of our circle theorems. So immediately, you should be drawing a line connecting the center and the point at which the tangent uh, meets. That is 90 degrees. Okay, well, there's a couple of more things going on then. I mean, this is the radius, right? We have 30 degrees. It looks like we're gonna have to use some right angled trig here. Let's redraw the triangle. So we have the horizontal. We have a situation like this, where this is the radius and this is 30 degrees. Do we have another length here? So we have this, AB, I mean, we have the coordinates of B, we don't have the coordinates of A, usually they do give it to you, but the only thing they give you is this 16. Now, 16 being where the tangent crosses the x-axis is this length. Yeah, this horizontal distance is 16. Nice. So, we can use Sokotoa to work out what R is now. R is opposite 30. 16 is the height. Okay, thinking about Sokotoa, which one involves O and H? It's so. Soin of 30 degrees is the opposite R divided by the hypotenuse 16. And this is where we're gonna get another mark in a non-calculated paper. We need to know sine of 30 is one half, okay? So sine of 30 is a half is R divided by 16. And we just need to rearrange for R, okay? Now, what some students like to do here is cross multiply. Remember, we're just trying to rearrange for R. So this is R divided by 16. So to rearrange for R, I'm gonna times by 16 on both sides. Okay, that's gonna go. R is a half of 16, ocho. Nice. Now we know the equation of the circle. It's x squared plus y squared is the radius squared. Eight squared is 64. Now, these coordinates must satisfy this equation because it lies on the circle. So let's sub it in. What's the most common mistake here? When they sub in 3p for x, they write this. Yeah, x is 3p, then they put squared. What's wrong here? They didn't square the three, okay? So if we're gonna write like this, we need to use a plus y squared. This one's all right because you're just changing y to p is 64. Now we square it, 3 squared is 9, then we have p squared plus another p squared is 64. Uh, adding them together we get 10 p squared is 64. Divide by 10, let's move over here. Uh, it'll be nice to write the answer down here. So p squared is 64 divided by 10, yeah, dividing by that coefficient which you can obviously simplify. Uh, so dividing top and bottom by two, we get 32 over five. Okay, now we need to root this. 
Hmm. I mean, we could, well, we wouldn't write the whole root around the whole thing. We're going to have to simplify that. So I'm going to do this. When we square root, we need to square root the top and the bottom. Yeah, now p is obviously not going to be negative because it's in the positive quadrant. So it's going to be root of 32 divided by root of 5. And this is not enough. We're going to have to simplify it. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 32 as a square number times something else. Okay. So what square number goes into 32? It's 16. Okay. So it's 16 times 2 divided by root 5. Then we're going to root 16, which is quattro, and then we get root 2, all divided by root 5. Are you going to leave your answer like this? I hope not. We don't like thirds in the denominator. So we're going to times top and bottom by root 5. In the exam, they'll instruct you on this. They'll say what form they want things in. So we are now done. So p is 4, root 2 times root 5, which is root 10 divided by root 5 times root 5 is 5. You can think of it as root 25, which is 5. And that is our answer. Maybe with all this extra simplification, uh, it might be 6 marks. 5 or 6 marks is what you're looking at. But this is quite an in-depth question. So what have we done today? We've looked at equation of a circle. We've looked at Sokotoa. We've looked at some circle theorems. We've looked at exact trig ratios. We've done some rationalizing denominators. All of these things in one question. These are one of those big questions in your exam. So make sure you save this video as part of your revision. And guys, if you learned something today, hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed for more content like this. And if you're interested in my full maths courses, there is a link in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.